a question that has been fought over since I started in my career was, can we blend uh, Chevron and Mobile Grease? Now, specifically, the two most popular of these is you have Chevron SRI, and then you have Mobile uh, but Polyrex or the EM grease for electric motor. These are the two leading greases that we use in the industry. My personal opinion is don't mix them, but there's a lot of disagreement around this, and I want to have a quick conversation around some of the research I've found, but some of the ideas that are out there on uh, this whole topic in general. Now, hi, how you doing? I'm Holden Schamberger. I'm with Chiller Academy and HVAC Time. We're talking chiller systems, and a big part of being a chiller tech is being able to service and grease and do a lot of motor work inside of our plants. Uh, not everybody, you know, is required to do that. Some guys are just flange to flange technicians, and so be it more power to you. Uh, but for the most of us, for the rest of us, uh, we've got to service the whole plant. Like we're not there just strictly for the chiller. So it, we have to have some awareness of these things, whether it be from a pump level, whether it be from a tower level, so forth and so forth. And a lot of people feel that you can't blend it. And one of the most common things I came up being told was, well, if you blend the two, then it can, um, it'll create a, a, like an acidic compound and it'll wear down the bearings and cause them to fail rapidly or quickly in some cases. The other side of the fence is it has no effect at all. And they've done this for years. And I'll, I'll make a note here to say that those that have said that, they're actual like motor remanufacturing shops. These are people that specialize in doing these bearings and pumps and it's what they're doing every day. And they're, they're the ones I've had directly tell me that, Hey, I, I've not had an issue with this. I've blended these greases for years and years and years. And it's never been an issue, blah, 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 blah. You really do get into this conundrum of who do I listen to? Like, which is right? Because while it's, it's convenient, right? It's, it's really convenient and it saves a ton of time if it doesn't matter. But if it does matter, then we're causing a lot of unnecessary failures and it takes a lot of time because that means that if you've, you, you walk into a plant that was used with one grease uh, previously and then you want to switch greases, well, that's not a simple thing. And most of the time, it's easier just to stick with what they already used, even if that's not what you wanted to use. There again, is that what the manufacturer recommended? What did they suggest would be the correct grease to use with their motors? And are we using those? Like, this, there's so much around that. And it, if, it, if it's not okay, it creates a lot of problems. If it is okay, it's, it's very convenient. I'll, I'll give it that. So I set out a few years ago and I wanted to really get a solution to this. And, and part of what um, really fueled this was uh, the Chevron, not Chevron, I'm sorry, the mobile grease had a major shortage. Uh, from what I understand, uh, one of their major factories ended up burning down and that took out a huge piece of their uh, manufacturing and supply of the mobile polyrex em grease and everybody was running through whatever stock they had and i, I don't think it's the only facility mobile had but it was one of their major ones for the u.s at minimum and so yeah it was dang near impossible. Like I, this, the strings I had to pull sometimes to get that grease in by the, by the case, even just one or two cases at a time. Like it was, it was, it, it was pretty crazy. During that time, Chevron was really the only sign, the only alternative everybody trusted. How about that? And, uh, that's what we were trying to use, which was, do we switch to Chevron? Anyway, during this time, this argument got really flared up because it's like, okay, do we just start switching over to the Chevron? Or, like, what does that mean? Can we f just more work our way through and get just enough mobile to get over whatever this hump is? Which is ended up being what happened. We, we did get just enough of it over that period of time to where we made it on the other side. In that process, I found a study that they took these two greases and actually compared them. Now, this study was not the most straightforward thing to find, and 
honestly, I, I wish I had saved it. I, I have it, what I remember of it, um, but I don't have it saved. And, and I, if I can go find it, I'll do a community post and, and share it out there because I think it would be worth refreshing and going back over. Either way, the study took these greases and basically they took a set of bearings, uh, ball bearings, and they put them into this housing. And they put it under a, um, uh, a simulated load and ran it for a period of time. I don't remember the time frames and all that kind of stuff. But when they did that, they combined the greases in that bearing and let it run like that. So what ended up happening was the bearings color itself turned this kind of gray color. And it had a little, little bit of a different texture to it from what I remember. And now grease in general, as it ages and wears, because it does, um, it will, it'll get this dark coloration to it in general. But they had photos in this uh, research paper that I was reading, and it was not the same. Like the, the dark coloration you get from just natural grease aging in this color were very, very different. They took a little bit of that grease and they sent it to a lab or they had a lab or something of the sort, and they had it analyzed they found that it had no acidic properties. So it did not turn acidic. Uh, so that did eliminate that, uh, I don't, don't want to say myth, but that idea that it was an acidity issue. It didn't convert into any kind of acidic compound, but what it did do is these two greases are made from different base uh, materials, which... Um, at one time, I could tell you that off the top of my head. I'm blanking on it at the moment. Either way, they're made from two different bases. And when these two elements or materials combine, they're, what made them able to lubricate, their lubricative properties, were counteracted. And they basically just fought against each other and turned the grease that was in there into just a genuinely a useless paste. It, was, it, it didn't really have anything to offer to the bearing for a, a lubrication. And it was just this pasty material that just didn't, didn't really do anything. And that was the result of that. And I've seen this a little bit in the field when I've done uh, bearing re uh, repairs and stuff in the past. You'll open everything up in there and you'll see where the colors had, had blended a bit. Um, now, one thing I will caveat into this is... Uh, when I've seen this in the field, usually the, the greases aren't necessarily like mixed together. And I don't remember in their study if they actually mixed them or if they just put them into the grease housing or the bearing housing um, side by side. I don't remember that part of it. But I've seen this kind of gray pasty material inside of bearing housings before. But a lot of the time, uh, you'll also see where just like the the blue and the red or the blue and the green just kind of blend together, but they're not actually like combined in a way. So what I've come to is it's not good to mix these greases. And if it is possible, I try my best to avoid mixing these. My personal preference is I like the mobile uh, EM the, the polyrex grease that they make. I've had amazing results with that. And it's not to say that the Chevron's truly inferior. I'm not saying that. It's just I came up using the mobile heavily. That's what I learned on. And I, I do trust and believe in that product. At the same time, I know a lot of people who I have extremely high respect for believe just the same in the Chevron. So I don't think the brand really matters. I think it's a matter of using what's best for the application what does the manufacturer actually recommend and then what do you trust you know you you have to take in and use what you actually trust to work and be good because if you don't trust it then your ability to have confidence in what it is you were doing isn't going to be there because you didn't trust that product to begin with so it is important that we use things we trust and so that we have confidence that we did the best job we could. That being said, um, I think that there is a little bit of a middle ground here. I know a lot of bearings who have gone a really long time knowing they got blended. They never had an issue. 
I know I've, I've seen a lot of bearings go a long time like that. And all of us have had that to some degree. Like there's all there's bearings all over the place that have mixed grease in them. And yet years down the road, they're still working just fine. I think one of the things that stands out to me is when we're pumping into a bearing housing, I think it depends on how much the grease actually gets combined because that was the, the critical finding in the study was when the greases combine, uh, they, they're able to counteract each other, but grease is not just a fluid. Now, part of what makes grease work is at ambient temperatures in our hand, grease is, well, grease is like a paste, but what actually happens is when it gets into the bearing housing and the bearing begins to spin and warm up that as that bearing warms up, that grease is able to melt a little bit and then get into the races and uh, provide lubrication. And it becomes more of a liquid substance then um, once the bearing is at operating temperatures. And so part of what happens is as bearings need more grease, they'll, well, they're going to get hotter in temperature. So as you need more lubrication, they're going to heat up more. That's going to cause more of the uh, grease to melt and flow into the bearing, which is going to bring the temperature back down. And there's, there's this nice little regulation process. So if, if you have a bearing that is not getting properly lubricated, it's going to run really hot. And it's possible that even if you grease the bearing and it still is running really hot, uh, maybe it doesn't have a, a bad vibration or anything like that happening. Maybe it's it's not necessarily failed, but it's running hot, which is going to make it fail. It could be this blending thing because part of what that means is when it becomes this, this paste of the two greases combining, because the base elements are what matters here. That, that was the main, the main finding of the study. The base elements that these greases are made from are what the, the core problem was. These were not compatible with each other. The, the, the root element that the grease is, is produced by. If that bearing housing was able to mix the two greases at a sufficient enough volume, then it may be that there, yeah, there may be, you know, grease in that housing, but it may not be able to actually liquefy and lubricate that bearing sufficiently, which is making it run excessively hot. And even when you add a little bit of fresh grease to it, it's still not enough because there's so much packed in there that is that is blended. Even just adding too much grease kind of plays into this as well, but that's a separate conversation I'm gonna do in a different video of being cautious not to add too much grease because it, my assessment is you can, my training is you can. So you have to be mindful of how much grease goes into it getting back to this temperature thing like it does really does come back to this temperature regulation we need to be able to balance the grease getting up to operating temperature and getting into the race uh, and then being able to help that bearing maintain temperature and staying at a proper uh, uh, lubricative fluid right that's that's really uh, that's really what we're trying to optimize for so in this in these instances where the two greases are in the same housing, but they've not actually combined into each other. And they're just, they're smashed up against one another, but they're not actually mixed. I think that is where probably the majority of bearings survive having a blended uh, state because they're not actually, um, they're not actually combined. They're just sitting in there side by side because, well, I mean, even when the bearings begin to, or the grease, I mean, when the grease begins to warm up, I think that's where it's going to do its most mixing. And the bearing spinning and the shaft spinning is going to cause a little bit of a mixing effect. But just depending on the particular bearing and its housing and how everything is laid out, whether we're talking a pillow block, whether we're talking a, a motor bearing, I think all that's going to have a major play into how much this grease actually mixes together or not. And the ones that survive a long time, my guess would be, I don't know this, but my guess would be that the conditions were right, that the two greases didn't really combine that much and that they just get used. Event, like it, it just eventually becomes a non-issue because if, you, if you're the one coming into a plant and you use 
the mobile, some the previous guy used the Chevron. Well, eventually, like that Chevron is going to end up getting used up uh, because that's part of what happens. The grease, as it melts, it gets into the race assembly, warms up, does this lubrication process, and it's going to seep out and leak out, and it's it's going to get used by the by the bearing assembly. And so that's why we have to re-grease and get fresh grease in there because that grease will begin to deplete as it warms up and just kind of seeps through the process. That's why uh, a lot of your um, where your your bearings are in your motors like that it gets really sticky kind of a nature. Even if the shields and, and, and stuff are in good condition and they're not blown, it'll still happen that way because uh, that grease is just seeping through. It's doing what grease is designed to do. So in that process, as that chevron begins to get used up, then I, the, the, there'll be probably a window in there where the two greases were touching that may not be so good for the motor but eventually it ends up it, you just you eventually you end converting over to to the mobile the polyrex and it may not ever show a symptom and i think that's how we we we're able to have these two opinions where some motors they blended badly and uh, or some bearing assemblies, they been they blended and then it caused a failure because they, they weren't lubricating anymore. Where in other circumstances, they didn't truly blend. They were they were side by side. They were touching, but they didn't actually get blended together. And because of that, it created the right conditions to not let it be an issue. That's that is my assessment in the end. Um, that that's where I've come to now that does mean that I don't believe in blending these these greases because if they are allowed to blend it can and will create a major failure so my approach is don't blend them but obviously it's not that simple either and there's more nuance to it and that's part of the point I wanted to discuss here and just kind of lay out the argument for um, is while I may plant my flag and don't mix them, that, that doesn't fit every scenario. You know, that's just my, my best practice is to do it this way. And that's the way I've chosen to move forward with doing it. I I'd love to hear your experience and your opinion on this. I know a lot of guys uh, through the polling, like y'all, uh, have mentioned that you like to uh, pull the drains and, and purge them. So I personally don't find i've tried to do this but just strictly purging old grease out new grease in like i've got thoughts around that but what is your experience on this i'd love to hear about it i think everybody would be benefited from a continuation of this conversation with that uh go check out chiller academy for me love to work with you over there love to help you improve your worth and increase what you get to work on and actually get into the equipment that you find interesting in your career and help guide you in the process uh just Go check it out. See what you think about it. If, I got, if there's anything over there I can help you with, let me know, please. With that, MTT, make the time for your family, for your spouse, for your kids. I'll see you later. I want to say thank you to today's video sponsor, which is CSG, Compressor Solutions Group, based out of Houston, Texas. They've also got a shop in DFW serving the Texas area, and they also can provide you compressor service nationally. They're a great group of guys. They've done a really good job with just getting their information out there. They try to really invest into training in this industry and just supporting the contractors. Reach out to Jake with any questions you have. He'll be able to take care of you, be able to help you out. They do full service and rebuilds on screw compressors and semi-hermetic recips. They've been a great friend of the channel. They've been a great friend of mine. I look forward to working with them for a long time to come.